Good evening, and welcome to this Candidates Forum sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Ventura County. The forum is for the, per the position of trustee of the Ventura County Community College District, area number one. Thank you to the members of the audience for being here this evening, and especially to the candidates for taking the time to and the energy to run for this very important office. I do want to admit that I am a proud graduate of the Ventura County Community College District, though it was more years ago than I will confess to. My name is Barbara Doyle, and I've been a member of the League of Women Voters for almost 20 years. I'll be your moderator this evening. And before we begin and I call upon the candidates, I'd like to give a few little housekeeping rules for those of you who've just joined us this evening. So first thing is, please silence your cell phones. I also want to remind you to please hold your applause. So even though you may support a particular candidate, we don't want you to applaud or cheer as much as you might feel like it. We'll save our applause to the end, and then we'll applaud for everybody all at the same time. The questions that we're going to be asking the candidates tonight come from you, the audience. I hope that you are all supplied with a card and a pencil, and if you need one, you can raise your hand, a monitor will come and bring you one. When your card's completed, you can again raise your hand, the monitor will pick it up, and you'll notice that card sorters will be handing those to me. We, even though each candidate only has one minute, which is an awfully short amount of time to answer the questions that are asked, we want to move through quickly and ask as many questions as we ha can. So some of the questions submitted will be combined or rephrased. I apologize for not using your question verbatim, but we want to get to as many questions as we can. And. Uh, when you give us your questions, um, please uh, write legibly. And to the candidates, because you do only have that one minute, I may have to interrupt you in mid-sentence, and I apologize for any perceived rudeness. Okay. So by prearrangement, the order of the candidates is as you see them on the stage. And so opening statements will begin with Josh Chancer. Hi, good, hi, good evening. Um, can you all hear me? Okay. Um, just want to say thanks for being here and thanks to the League for putting this uh, forum on. Look, I'm really honored to be running for the uh, Ventura County Community College District and I'm going to start right off with telling you my chief reason for running is I truly care about Ventura County. I think that's one of the core reasons for running is I'm a firm believer that Ventura County and the Community College District, they're connected 100%. When we have a strong Ventura County Community College District. We have a strong Ventura County. Um, my personal background, I think, has made me or makes me uniquely prepared for this position. I've been a school teacher, at a high school school teacher, for 19 years, and I also teach at California Lutheran University at the university level. Um, lastly, one of the most important reasons I'm running is uh, sitting right here in the audience is my family. I am a proud parent of three kids and a beautiful wife there, but. My kids most likely will have a Ventura College experience just like I did. And it was an amazing experience. And I want to make sure that Ventura College stays strong for many years to come. Thanks. OK, thank you. And our next opening statement will be by AJ Valenzuela. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for the League of um, Women Voters for putting on this event. Um, I'm running for this position because I believe strongly in our community colleges. I was a product of the Ventura College Promise Program, which, un which enabled me to get my college education through the community college system, transfer to UC Santa Barbara, and come back to reinvest in the community. Uh, I'm a supporter of Free Community College. It's how it used to be back in the 1960s, and it should be again. Um, I have covered higher education policy both as a student member, the past student trustee of the community college district, and president of the California Community College Association of Student Trustees, and also for assembly member Doss Williams uh, two years ago. Um, and I'm running now on a progressive platform to represent uh, young community members and the needs that the next generation needs. Thank you. Thank you. And our next statement will be by Dina P. Leite. P. Lay it. <laughs> I, 
Did I get close? That's close enough. Okay. Everybody, everybody who knows me knows me. Um, 24 years here in Ventura as a, as a business owner and an entrepreneur, publisher, and, a, and a, an activist for social greater good. Um, I am actually the only candidate who's worked for the college district. And um, that's really what's inspired me to be an agent for change. And um, I, 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 I strongly believe that with industry partnership, industry and cultural partnerships, that we can provide all of the essential tools that we need for students of any age to achieve a college degree and learn relevant workforce skills and get jobs that pay fair living wages close to home. And with creativity and compassion, you know, we can, we can address the needs of, of those people who are really part of what our community is. And that is students who work, veterans, thank, thank students you, with kids. Oh, okay. sorry. Thank, thank you. And our, our last candidate is Jeanette Sanchez Palacio. Thank you and good evening. Thank you for having us here tonight. Thank you to the League of Women Voters, our moderator, Barbara Doyle, thank you, as well as CAPS Media for their public service in bringing you this forum. My many years of public service and working locally for the state, along with my experience working with local education and nonprofit organizations who work to prepare our strong workforce will be extremely valuable as a trustee. I have a deep understanding of what our community college district does and how our region functions, which will allow me to immediately assist with addressing the changes coming down from the state and the transitions happening in our local economy. My vision is to one, expand support for our first generation students. Two, coordinate with businesses to ensure that we have a curriculum that aligns with industry needs. And three, to better integrate our K through 12 with our universities so that we have career pathways for our students. It's an honor to share my vision with you tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go to the first questions for our audience, and the first person to be called upon is AJ. We just kind of made up a random schedule of calling people, so it will come as a, as a surprise. There you go, okay. So to AJ and then to each of you one at a time. Um, there, all of the campuses of the community college district offer both general education classes for transfer students, but they also offer um, more vocational programs, which could include associate's degrees, certificate programs, and other career paths. Can you address how you would prioritize whether they, the dual purpose of the community colleges, or if you see any other purposes besides those two? to AJ. Uh, thank you. So the community colleges have been in place for like since the 1920s and really it's the purpose of you know like you said general education for transfer, vocational skills, but also for lifelong learning, for uh, for immigration, for immigrants to receive uh, education to get citizenship and to provide services for the community like when it comes to industry and so forth. Um, I would prioritize student success seeing as our new state budget um, with has a student a base performance based funding formula which would which would mean we had to get students to get their uh, general education transfer or attain their goals in order to receive more funding so basically we would have to ensure those students that are most at risk or first generation students get their education for transferring or vocational skill so the community college district can continue receiving more funding thank you okay thank you and the question next goes to Jeanette so Jeanette, uh, transfer versus career paths and any other purposes for the, the college district? Right, I believe that we need to find a good balance, um, a sweet spot. I think for so long we've had community colleges emphasize on transfer and emphasize on four-year university <laughs> path. However, um, our diverse population of students calls for something else as well, and that's vocational training and certificate um, uh, access and so I think that we need to uh, refocus and we need to provide for the non-traditional students who aren't going back to school to get a four-year degree but who are going back to school to reinforce the um, skills that they might have or to get new ones so they can get a better paying job 
Okay, thank you. And the question next to Josh. Yeah, you know, um, as I work with high school students, seniors in particular, every single day, it's really common that seniors don't know what they want to do. So they, they enter Ventura College, Oxnard College, Moore Park College, and they have no clue what they want to do. So I, I think the answer to that question is flexibility, is to make sure there's flexibility that students can achieve where they find interest, where they find a niche, and they find a passion. Secondly, I think vocational training and certificates really do need to expand because I think the days of finishing high school with a high school diploma and getting a high paying job, they're gone. Those certificates are critical now. So as students are finishing high school, many of them enter into a college program and there's some questions there and I think we need to make sure that we're able to get the training and the certificates so the employers and the businesses and local agencies are ready for these students. Thank you. And Dina, the question to you about the, um, the purposes of the college district. Yeah, exactly. Well, the average age of our student is actually uh, between 26 and 27 years old. Mm -hmm. And we have community members who want uh, better access to more flexible class schedules and a different kind of online learning. And that's because we have students who work who do not or cannot quit their jobs. And we have students with kids who have no alternatives for childcare. I think that one of the things we could do is actually provide supplemental childcare for our students with kids. We have 55,000 veterans in our county, but only a few hundred actually in our, in our, in our curriculum. And so we need to find a better way to guide our veterans in and give them a hope for a future. So, and we also need to have much stronger industry partnerships. We've got key industries in our, in, in, in our county, uh, health industry being one of them, and yet we are not providing certification programs to infill the jobs okay. available there. Okay, and thank you very much. Okay, so now to our next question. Dina, you're first up for this one. So uh, someone asked this personal question. How much time are you prepared to give to the elected position of VCCD trustee? And what do you expect to do with that time? Wow, that can be a really long answer. The well, but the, you only have one minute. <laughs> the, short, the short answer is, I expect this to be my last full-time job with the college district. I'm able and lucky enough to have a client base that I can maintain to pay my bills, my mortgage, support my family, but I want this to be my last full-time job. I'm the only uh, a candidate who's actually worked for the college district, and I am dedicated and passionate about bringing quality of life to our students and our staff, and I will dedicate every hour of every day if I have to, to see this through. What was the second part? Uh, that was, um, what would you do with your time as trustee? How I would bring quality of life to students, staff, and our community. Okay, thank you. And then the same question to Josh. You know, um, that's an interesting question. I, I think how much time it would take is, it, it really depends on working with different groups. And I've always believed elected officials should have a really open door policy. When different groups approach um, school board members or trustees, there needs to be an open door access to where trustees can interact with the people they serve. I've always taken an approach that we appreciate who we serve, and we fundamentally need to appreciate, you know, make sure that employees, students are also appreciated. So, secondly, I think the second part of the question was, what 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 would you do with that the time that you spend as trustee? I I think communication is the biggest part. I really do. I think it's talking to the individuals that incorporate or that are associate with the college system itself. Okay, thank you. And same question to Jeanette. Whatever time is needed. Um, signing up for running for public office is not easy. I w I've worked for elected officials. I know they don't have weekends. I know they don't have night times. I know they don't have early morning times to relax. So I'm well aware of what I'm signing up for. Um, and I do it because I'm a passionate public service servant and I want to ensure that the skills that I can bring um, will benefit my community. 
Um, I think that part of the work that I want to do as a trustee is to ensure that I'm also reaching out to the different groups that I would be representing. I would love to have meet and greets. I would love to have coffees, um, sidewalk sessions, which is what we already do with my elected official. Um, but just to get to know the community, because coming in as a trustee, as a newly elected person, I am not going to have all the answers. I am not going to have all the understandings of what is happening. And so I'd like to know and be informed. So I would have to talk to everyone um, that is involved with the community college. And that would be one of my first goals. Great. Thank you very much. And to AJ, same question. How much time are you prepared to give? And what would you do with that time? Um, well, as a former student trustee for the community college district, I've noticed like when people are in elected positions, you get people get out of it what you put into it. So really, as a board member, you know you have the not just the board meetings or the policy subcommittee meetings, but you know reaching out to different constituent groups, constituent groups when it comes to educators, staff, students through their shared governance process, along with like retirees, business, nonprofits, etc. When it comes to uh, making decisions. And so for me, as someone who's been on the board previously and fortunate enough to have um, a strong a job that pays well enough for me to, uh, as a young professional, um, to, to provide for myself but also do stuff in the community, I would put as much effort as I could uh, reasonably into the community. Okay, thank you. All right, our next question has to do with working with the community and raising money. Um, what would your, the question is first going to go to Jeanette, and the question is, what is your position on leveraging the resources of the community college district with those of the local community? For example, at the Ventura College campus, the library or the stadium track um, used by local residents as opposed to, to students. So Jeanette, to you. I mean, I, I think that we have to build these partnerships um, out, outside of our community college um, community uh, because at the end of the day community colleges will impact everyone whether you attend them or not um, and I think that uh, we we are not just uh, made up of one or by one group but there are several um, groups that can give us uh, the resources that are needed I think private Private-public partnerships are essential to the existence of the resources that community colleges offer, and that is something that I, I fully support and I think that um, should continue. Okay. Thank you very much. And the same question now to Dina, leveraging the community resources with the resources of the college district. Okay. So, you know, it's a two-way street. I mean, when I talk about really strong community and cultural partnerships, uh, that's a way of saying bring the community into the community college. And we've kind of let that slide. We've left the community out of our community college. And it's imperative through industry partnership and individual partnership to be all inclusive. You know, and, and the other thing is that there are monies in those partnerships. For instance, look at what we did with, with Gibbs Trucking. We were able to create a whole new certification program that um, w through a million dollar grant from Gibbs, uh, underwrote an entire certification program uh, that I had the pleasure of helping to fill seats in. So, I mean, that's, that's a way that we can get from the community, but we have to be more inclusive. The community deserves its community college. It's paying for it. And they deserve any, any, um, any aspect of that campus that okay, they desire. Th thank you. And next to AJ, your, the question about the community and the community college district. Uh, so one of the conversations I had early on in this campaign was with an elected official, uh, or former elected official, stating that how, like for example, at Ventura College, it's in the dead center of the city of Ventura, but it doesn't seem like it's part of the community, especially when you have two high schools right next to it, Foothill Tech and Buena High School, but there isn't any uh, shared partnerships when it comes to providing programs for uh, sports or um, arts and so forth, and really need to capitalize on those opportunities, especially when it comes to planning between the community college district and the local cities of Moore Park, Ventura, or Oxnard. Like, you know, what they are doing 
um, that they are doing like parking uh, redevelopment, like how is it going to affect the local community, or if the local community, if they're doing their own work, how is it going to affect the college, and so forth. So really just being proactive with building those partnerships. Okay, thank you. And to Josh, same question to you. You know, um, one of the areas where I've, I've learned so much about the need for stronger community in the college has actually been at the, at the college council meetings. Um, and, you know, when you, when you talk to members of that council and the community around the college, um, they're very proud of the Ventura College and that campus and all of the campuses. Uh, many residents told me it's the crown jewel of, you know, of college campuses. And I agree with that. It's a beautiful campus. And I, I think we can look at other community colleges throughout the state and nation and look at models for what these organizations have done to have a stronger relationship with the community. Um, right now, I mean, we all drive by. My, my kids play AYSO soccer every weekend at, at Ventura College. But I think a lot more can be improved and built upon at that facility. It truly is a beautiful place, and, and I think m the community deserves and should use it more. Okay, thank you. And a uh, new question now first is going to go to AJ. Um, is there anything that you feel is missing in the community college district that if it were present would make a difference? Well, that could take about an hour to answer for each person, but we'll give you one minute. Is there anything that you see is missing that you think would make a difference if you could, could get that one thing? Uh, yes, so the first thing I would say would be uh, free community college at the local level for Ventura County. We do have the, well, fortunately we had the Ventura College Promise Program and then also the California College Prom uh, Program in place for students who take uh, at least 14 semester units the first year will get their tuition taken care of, but also extending that for two years for all students because that breaks down a barrier. The second thing I would state is really student health when it comes to having, um, having the efficient resources for uh, mental health counselors for um, each campus, be especially because like it's being done at Santa Barbara Unified School District, that each college, each school board, each school campus there has a certified professional. We need that also on our local campuses for our students because it's a natural place. We have young, uh, young adults who are coming to each day where they can get checked in at. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the question next to Josh: What is the one thing? I think. The one thing that we can improve on is relationships. And I know that's a hard thing to, that's not really tangible, but I, I think in many areas, whether it's with employees or with students, and I think we need to refocus on decisions that decisions start with student success. And a lot of that, I think, comes with the student experience. You know, when you visit the different campuses, there are stark differences at the three different campuses. And I'd like to make sure we're doing everything we can that when students step on that campus, they feel supported. So to answer that question, it would be relationships. Okay, thank you very much. And Dina, your next step. What is your one well, thing? Well, I have a long list. I'll try to get, I'll try to okay. just uh, key on the, um, one thing that we've done is that we've really, um, We've really compromised our community, I mean our campus safety. We've done a grand sweeping um, cuts with our campus uh, police department and they're really struggling. And this is at a time where I don't think we can afford to do that. So I think what I'd like to do is uh, return the uh, full working budget to our campus uh, uh, police department so that they can uh, manage a higher safety level, not just for the campus, but for the neighborhood that they also patrol. And I would also really like to bring back intergenerational learning. I think not for credit classes and community service classes serves a really important role in, in Ventura and Ventura County. 30% of our, of our uh, uh, citizens are 65 and older, and we need to bring that back. Okay, thank you. And then the, the question to Jeanette. A couple of things for me that I think are missing, one of them being um, improved access to the underrepresented communities. Um, currently, in looking at the Santa Clara Valley, while it's outside of this particular district, it impacts the entire district as a whole. And we need an education center, education, whatever you want to call it, but access to education for a growing population in that area. We also need continuity among the campuses that we currently have. I recently learned that veterans courses 
they all are valued differently at each uh, campus and they each have a different credit for when they're ready to transfer or take credit for those courses. Those are simple solutions that we can look at so that we can have a continuity among our, our, our campuses that if a veteran student wants to transfer or wants to go to community college in Ventura, Oxnard, or Moore Park, that they're still going to get the same credit for that class. Okay, thank you. All right, and the next question, Jeanette, you'll be first with this one. So what, what should the community colleges do to partner with local industry or to otherwise close the workforce skills gap so that students can be hired directly out of the community college? I think they've started to um, work on relationships uh, with different businesses. I believe the chamber has done a lot of great work in pulling the different industries together. I work with the Workforce Education Coalition as well, where we talk to industries and we listen to what it is that they're missing that they want in workers. I think what community colleges need to continue to do is to en enhance those relationships, continue to be open about the process that it's needed, listen to industry, what is it that they need, because it's great that we're graduating students with degrees and it's great that they're transferring, but if we're not producing the workforce that's needed for our, our industries, then we're, we're really not doing a service to our businesses, our economy, our community, but more so our students. Okay, and Dina, next to you, that same question about the uh, workforce and partnering with local industry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Well, uh, I've actually been meeting with uh, the director of VCHA uh, to see what kind of programs we are not providing certifications for, and it's mind-boggling how many um, additional programs we could bring into our campus. We also have a, a multi-year waiting list for our nursing program, and if our nursing program is so uh, 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 burdened and overflowing with students, we should simply expand it. But one of the um, key things that we can do is go and, and listen, get on our district advisory boards, I'm on two of them, district uh, industry advisory boards, and really listen to what our industries, our Ventura County industries are looking for. They're actually hiring from out of the county for good paying jobs. Our, the most important thing that we could do for our students is to get them hired in jobs that pay a, pay a fair living wage close to home. And with hey, the industry partnership, we can do that. Thank you, Dina. Okay, and uh, next to Josh, uh, what would you do to uh, close the workforce skills gap or partner with local industry? Thanks. Um, you know, one thing that I would really advocate for is the apprenticeship programs. So making sure we have a lot of options for students. Um, like many of my counterparts here, you know, talk to employers, talk to industry. But one area that I'm fortunate to have, one group that I've talked with a lot are students. And when you ask students what they want, they want internships. They really, really want internships. So I'd make sure that there are internships available for students in as many fields as we can. And when you talk to employers, they're also eagerly wanting internships. So I think it's a very much a underutilized area. Okay, thank you. All right, and now um, our next question will be uh, first going, oh, I'm AJ, I beg your pardon. That crossed you off and you didn't even get to speak. Not fair, my apologies. Um, will you let us know about your plans for the partnership with the uh, local industry and workforce skills? Uh, yes, so as I do think it is important to speak with in industry about the future, their needs as businesses, but I also think it's important to speak with the workers on what they think the needs are, because the ones who know what the future needs are are the ones that are doing it each day, the people who are doing renewable energy installation, the nurses that are taking care of people, and, all, and welders who are doing the work and what the industry is going to look like for the future for the people. Um, and also, I'm fortunate enough to have been, I'm fortunate enough myself to uh, be involved with an organization called Cause, where we actually create a pipeline of young, uh, of young people to, with paid internships to get involved in community organizing. And really, if you want to make that, then if you really want to make a pipeline, you have to pay young people for work that they're gonna learn on the job and hopefully make that into a career in the future. Thank you. 
and uh, realize that we're getting close to our time, but we did start late. So I'm gonna ask two more questions and then allow the candidates to make their closing statements. We'll run a, a little bit over. I hope that's okay with caps. All right, so first up is Josh for this one. And can you, you've mentioned this uh, briefly, can you talk to us about the promised benefits, your feelings about whether they should be continued, extended, perhaps to part-time students? Um, how, how do you feel about that program? You know, I feel, I feel strongly about that. I mean, I'd love to say that any post-secondary or post-high school education would be free. Um, and I think that the community college system can do everything it can to take away challenges for students. Uh, one of, unfortunately, one of the biggest challenges that college students have is paying for it. So whatever we can do um, with promise programs, even textbooks, allocations, whatever we can do to relieve some of the burden for students, we should be able to do it. Okay, sounds good. And uh, next to AJ, so what, would, what is your position on the promise benefits, um, keeping them, extending them, reducing them? Um, as a former recipient of the Promise program, I think it's great. <laughs> um, I do think that we do need to expand it. Like I said, the California College Promise is in place now due to AB 19 uh, from the state that students have the opportunity to have their first year college education paid for. But you also see places like Santa Barbara City College with their endowment where it provides recent high school graduates to your college tuition with textbooks or City College of San Francisco where they have an agreement with the local county uh, city government about providing universal uh, tuition for their students and really seeing what how can we be creative here in Ventura County to provide to your college education or even how we can provide it for part-time students in the long run to get a full other education paid for along with textbooks and it doesn't just start with to stop with school it's also transportation thankfully with the the VCTC with the transportation, but also housing and food. I was that student who struggled sometimes where I had to choose between riding the bus home back to Oxnard or getting food. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dina, quick, the same question to you. Well, the Ventura Promise is one of the first things I was hired to work on with Dr. Robin Collot, so I'm a really strong believer, believer in it. That was about 11 years ago. Now, I, I do think that the state of California makes college virtually free in terms of registration to anybody who can't pay for it. But what's killing our students is when they have to quit a job to try to get through the system in a timely manner. So what we need to do is, is in, in partnership with programs like Promise, create more flexible schedules for working students and create more solutions for students with kids. A lot of our pop population are working students or working young adults. And if, if they quit their job, they're going to incur a high level of debt. So we want to take something like promise and balance it with flexibility to give our stu students the best choices and the best quality of life that we can bring them. Okay, thank you. And Jeanette, the same question. Absolutely, I mean, uh, the Promise program has done so much for our students, I support it. Um, I think the difference for me is that I wanna be realistic about a sustainable plan. Um, the foundations have done an absolute marvelous job at maintaining and getting funding for students to be able to have these um, scholarships to go to college for free. Um, but I think we need to plan ahead, work with the current board, work with staff, faculty, students, to come up with a, a sustainable solution and not just depend on private donations or endowments. Okay, thank you. All right, um, our last question before we have the closing statements, and we've touched on this, but to dig down a bit. Um, the question will first go to AJ. So do you have concerns and specific concerns about campus, campus safety and what would you do about it? Um, so, from my understanding that there, like, and recently we've been going through the Me Too movement and some, and, and areas, women and young people or people or even uh, first generation students or non-citizens are, do not feel safe uh, in the community. And so I would be more than happy to support um, our, our, our non-citizen students to 
to receive um, that security through introducing a resolution to ensure that we are, as a Ventura County Community College District, uh, would not coordinate with any uh, form of integration uh, agents right there and ensuring that, um, and when we do our student health uh, orientation for students, that they are actually aware of sexual harassment prevention uh, for uh, women and other students. Okay, thank you. And that uh, same question now to Jeanette. In regards to public safety, uh, for me it's a multi-layer issue. Absolutely, I would want to sit with our public safety officers, talk about what are the resources that are needed. I understand they're uh, you know, pulling double shifts, working double time and whatnot, but I think public safety also goes to um, our LGBTQ students, it goes to our women students, it goes to our parents who are taking classes late at night, it goes to so many other things and it, it's not just an issue of um, security, but it's an issue of ensuring that all of our students feel comfortable on the campus, feel safe, that they are in an in a environment that um, they will not be harmed. And that takes a, a coalition. It takes more than one group to come up with the answers. And um, I would uh, really push to work with multiple um, organizations, groups on campus to ensure that everyone feels safe. Thank you. And Josh, what is your position, uh, your concerns about campus safety and what would you do? You know, as someone that, that works on uh, a school campus every single day, I think it's really important to recognize you might have the best educational system in the whole world, but if you don't have campus safety, it doesn't matter. Students, staff, and the public need to feel safe on a, on a college campus. So first place I think is our campus police department um, needs to be fully funded and make sure they're getting all the support they need. But secondly, I think that the board needs to make sure they hear the voices from the staff and students that are on campus every single day and find out what their needs are and find out where safety can be improved. Um, decisions need to be made with students and staff in, in, in consultation. Thank you. Dina? Our campus police department has been completely ravaged. We had eight uh, active officers on each campus. We're now down to two. These, ca these police officers not only patrol the campus, but also the neighborhood. Our campus police department had to borrow $3,000 from the vice president and more per college just to buy flak jackets because the trustees would not do that for them. There is no excuse for that. Another thing is I'd like to bring uh, uh, community partnerships like uh, with Interface right onto campus into our mental health, uh, into our health services department so that domestic violence, victims of domestic violence and anybody experiencing abuse has immediate uh, refuge, uh, a confidential refuge. And the other thing is that we need to make sure that we have better locking device systems. We've had more mass shootings in the history of our country just this year, and a lot of them were on, 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 on school campuses. So we really have to take this seriously. It's only a Thank matter you. of time. Thank you, Dina. Okay, so we'll have a few acknowledgments and then get to the closing statements. First of all, I think a round of applause for our, our candidates here. Thank you, CAPS TV, for broadcasting this. It'll be on Channel 15 in a few days. Thank you. Thank you, members of the audience. Thank you to the League volunteers. We encourage, the, as you leave, to stop by the League table and find out about the League supporting ballot measures. And uh, we'll move on now to the closing statement. So we're going to be doing this in reverse order of the opening statement. So our first person will, will be Josh. And Josh, your one minute closing statement. Oh, I'm sorry, we're at the other way. Other way. I beg your pardon, Jeanette. You, you are the, well, you were last and you are now Universe. first, yes. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks again for having us here tonight. Um, I'm a product of our community college systems. I truly believe that without the community college, I would not have been able to acquire my master's um, degree in public administration. 
Um, and I've also been fortunate enough to, not, to work not just for one legislator, but two legislators who have been key education leaders. And that was Assemblymember Doss Williams, who was the chair of higher education, and currently Assemblymember Jackie Irwin who sits on the Higher Education Committee. And, and with her, we were able to bring the engineering program to Cal State Channel Islands. Um, I have the support also of local education leaders like Dr. Trudy Arriaga, um, Barbara Fitzgerald, Debbie Golden. And I feel fortunate enough that these education leaders have trusted me and know that I can get the job done. So I would be honored to serve you in this capacity. And I look forward to the election, November 6th, and I hope I can get your vote. Thank you. OK, thank you. And now to Dina. Uh, you, know, this is, I, you know, this is not a political stepping stone for me. I'm really passionate about being the next college trustee. And I think working at the college district for over a decade really has what has inspired me to do so. You know, I want to help shape the future of higher education, and I want to bring the community back into the community college. Now, you know, sometimes what some people want is not what everybody needs. And what I want to do is I want to provide what I know our community needs, and that is quality of life for all. I really want to inspire our community to be involved, but I want to inspire our students to go on and make a better life close to home. Thank you. AJ? Uh, thank you all for coming tonight. I greatly appreciate your attendance and listening to the candidates. Um, I'm running on the progressive platform advocating for a free community college. I was the product of the Ventura College Promise program, coming back here to Ventura County and reinvesting into it. You know, I've covered higher education policy for the state assembly, and I believe I have the closest relationship with, uh, with the young people and students attending our community college system. I've also been endorsed by organizations such as Cause Action Fund, Democratic Socialists of America, Ventura County Chapter, and individuals such as Oxnard Mayor Pro Tem, Karen Ramirez, Ventura School Board Member, Mary Hafner, and even individuals such as Kevin DeLeon, Fiona Ma, and the former Speaker of the Assembly, uh, John A. Perez. And I look forward to serving on this board in the community when elected. Thank you. Thank you, and Josh. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much um, for, all, for everyone for being here. Look, as, as a former Ventura College student, public school teacher for almost 20 years, university instructor. Um, I'm really, really proud out of, out of all the endorsements I have, the one that means the most to me are the instructors, teachers, and faculty of the Ventura County Community College District. So I, I just want to say that I wouldn't do this unless they had faith in me and as a board member. Um, one thing I'd like to mention is the promise I can make to every constituent and every community member is every decision, every vote I make will have students and student success in mind. So that will, that will really drive every decision I make. Thank you very much. OK. A round of applause for all of us. Yes. OK. Thank you. And good evening on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Ventura County. Drive safely. <laughs>